Yeah. Okay. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Evan Growth live stream today. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's bring in a little bit of background music because you know how we do it. Uh, today, we're going to talk all about productivity tools. So everything you need to do to just be more predict productive uh, inside of Webflow. We're going to talk about integrations. We're going to talk about communications tools. We're going to talk about, you know, all the various tools that we use to be successful at uh, FinSuite and how you can use them to improve your workflow. But before we get too far into this thing, let's up and grow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What's up, Joe? <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going? I see a new hat. What is Ooh. that? This is that uh preview, that Fin Suite merch preview right here. <laughs> I ordered this actually before we nice. even started talking about doing that. And it just came in the other day, coincidentally. Uh, but yeah, we've got uh some updates on that last week, as um some of you know who were in the crowd with us. Hello to everyone who's back again. Uh, we hit our threshold, so we started planning a merch store, and I figured it'd be appropriate to just kind of show off some of that, uh, you know, my personal swag over here. So anyway, what's up, Joe? What other, uh, any other, any other announcements before we get too, uh, too far started or anything like that? What else we got? Yeah, we also have the Noble Airtable app Ooh. approved by Airtable. So we have, as of yesterday, been approved. We resubmitted our screenshots, and I would assume that we'll be live in the store by next week. I don't know how long it takes to go and actually push it live, but we're approved. So good news there. Excited to share that with you. We're working on tutorials <laughs> as we speak. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know people are excited about that. That's like a long time coming. People have been asking all over. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to be exciting to see in play. Uh, how, how are we going to like where like do we have a list of people if you're like what a secret inner circle? We've got a few people that we're already going to put in their hands. But like how can people like yeah. start to think about getting their hands on that as it comes al alive? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Uh, we're going to have a have a form to fill out. We're going to have an Airtable form. You fill it out. You'll be added to that list. And when it is launched, you will then be able to use it. Nice, nice. And so hopefully that will be happening quite soon. Again, we heard back from Airtable, just a few tweaks on our end, getting a couple of things ready. And we will uh, hopefully make an announcement about that on the show. So the last thing we wanted to ask you all to do was to vote. It looks like right now it's going to be SEO next week. So we'll be talking about SEO and best practices unless you all vote for something else. So head on over to growth.finsuite.com to vote for the next topic. And if you're watching this and not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel um, and like this video. But uh, otherwise, yeah, like the video, y'all. Come on. Five likes, 48 people watching. Let's do the damn thing. Um, <laughs> okay. So this is becoming kind of a trend. Let's see. Will you do a Q&A about Noble? Yes, of course. Uh, um, we will do full tutorials. We'll do live stuff. Oh, the other thing we're going to do is the, um, next Thursday, we're going to do like a live design review, live design website review type yeah. thing. So, um, if we're going to experiment, we're going to have a couple of the FinSuite designers on the show with us. We're going to start like a new segment. So this will be on Thursday as opposed to Tuesday. And we're going to do live site critiques, um, looking at your, you know, if we go into the inside, go into the outside, like talk about the design, the aesthetic, the copy, the experience, whatever, all of that. Um, and so hopefully that'll be a cool learning experience. We might even dive into the preview links on some of these to show you how things are kind of built and go inside of the guts. And that'll be more hands on uh, as opposed to this show is a little bit more editorial and opinion based. And so um, a a upon uh, demand from some of the folks in the crowd, we're going to go ahead and put that together. And so stay tuned. Um, I think the 29th, is that what we said, Joe? The 29th will be the first episode. We're going to do like a pilot in uh, yeah, a week from this right. Thursday. We're going to do a, a pilot episode live. So feel free to join us for that. Uh, but okay, this is getting into a habit. We've got a disclaimer before every episode. And this time we're just going to kind of say, <laughs> look, there's a ton of tools out there. Uh, we're living in the world of tools. We're living in the no code world where everyone's kind of building their tools now and hacking together things to build uh, boutique software, and that's super cool. Um, you could get flooded and overwhelmed with uh, tools and, and things. And so just know that these are kind of the tools that work for us. These are the things that we use at FinSuite or personally or individually as a team to be successful. That doesn't mean that these are the only tools or, you know, the uh, 
the, the be all end all, the holy grail of tools. And so uh, some of them you may use, some of them you may have never heard of. So uh, that's kind of part of this. Hopefully we learn from each other. If you have uh, tools that you'd like to share, your favorite tools, go ahead and start leaving those in the comments. Uh, the Q&A always gets a lot, uh, a lot of fun in these shows. And so we have a, a huge chunk, a portion for that. But yeah, start leaving us uh, thoughts about which tools you use. Um, and we'll get into some of our tools. Uh, do you, Joe, have any other thoughts about disclaimer or thoughts uh, on that? Yeah, tools are for you. Uh, make sure that just because we're talking about tools doesn't mean that you should be using these tools. Maybe you should be using these tools, but we're also speaking about these as a team, as an agency. And when appropriate, we will tell you, hey, this is more of a team tool. This is a team tool that maybe you can use as an individual. So make sure you're thinking about yourself and your workflow when considering any of these tools. Okay. Um, okay, real quick, uh, before we go any further, two questions. Penny, uh, it'll be at noon, just like this show on Thursday, the 29th. And Grace says she received an email about the client first system, but didn't receive the project transfer. That may have to do with the email you sent us not being the same email you have for your Webflow account. Um, and so if you want to reach out, um, you know, maybe we can help communications at finsuite.com. Uh, we can help try to square that away. Um, okay. Or if not on a pro account, that's another, oh. that's another thing that prevented a lot of transfers that there were users on the free account and you cannot receive the transfer. Yeah. So yeah, that's another reason grace that that could have gone wrong. Okay. All right, so uh, disclaimers are out of the way. Questions have been answered. Start dropping your tools in the chat. Uh, we're gonna talk, and, and this is uh, kind of a unique thing, so I'm gonna let Joe explain this because um, I was expecting when I started at FinSuite um, in October of last year to kind of have to learn all these new tools and kind of figure out all the workflows and processes of FinSuite, and I did have to do some of that to a certain extent, but there's also a very open tool policy here. So Joe, do you wanna talk a little bit about how uh, you address that with a team or kind of your, your philosophy on that? Yeah, absolutely. We like people to use the tools that they're comfortable with. We do have a few required tools, but overall, if you're working here and you have a tool that helps your workflow, you can go and use that tool. And that's what I said in the beginning, that this is for you. If there's a tool that is hurting your workflow, you should probably stop using that tool. We do have the required ones, and it's important to have some required ones because they are required for important activities like communication. So we are doing that. It is important to be mindful of tools because as you get more tools and you start implementing more tools, there's more of a learning curve of onboarding people to your team. So Reimar said, hey, we didn't have to learn too much. You, you just kind of jump in and start working. That's powerful to have somebody go and spend a, a month or two learning how to use tools in your workflow, it's expensive and you may have to change that tool in the future anyway. Yeah. So you've just wasted a lot of time learning old information. Yeah, and quick disclaimer that this, another disclaimer, so much disclaimer. We're like, this is like a legal talk show at this point. Okay? We just thought we're, you know, except we're not lawyers. So disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. No, um, so I think some of that will change too as we kind of grow and evolve because we are formalizing yep some of these processes. And I think that um, a lot of this has to do with kind of we're building in public here, right? And so a lot of this advice is not necessarily the advice you might get from a perennial 20 year old agency that kind of runs a little more rigid and a little more structured. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see yeah. that we're a little bit more kind of loose and more about empowering the individual to create in whatever facet empowers them. Uh, but I think that may change over time, right? Because we're we are imp implementing ClickUp, and let's go into the process development. Because yep. um, as someone comes on, uh, you know, now they immediately get invited to Slack, they get invited to ClickUp, you know. Um, so we've kind of had some systems in place, but now we're putting a, a few more into place, right? Some structure around project management, especially as we get into the the phase where like more than one or two people are just handling a project, right? And so when you're starting. You know, you may not need some real robust project management software if it's just you working on a project or some you and somebody else. Although I would encourage you to do that because it's been amazing having, you know, some structure to that. But um, yeah, these are kind of the systems. And so like, let's talk a little bit about how these processes evolve and how, you know, we pick new tools and how we d decide like, 
how do we, you know, when are we going to implement a tool company wide, or when is this going to, when are we going to adopt this as part of like our official workflow? And when is this something that, Hey, if somebody wants to use it, you can use it, you know, kind of Miro is like that for us, right? Where some people on the team use it. Uh, you like to use it. I like to use it, but it's not like, it's not a tool that we like the whole team runs on like a click up or a slack. So how do you start thinking about when a product or a project, because there are so many tools out there, when do you decide that, Hey, we're going to like use this across the board as a team? When something really stops working, when you've been doing something, some task, some process, and it's been working, 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 and then it stops working, that's a sign, hey, we need, we need to change tools and maybe we need to fix this problem for everybody. That's really the first step. And this happens often. As you grow as a company, the features that you needed in the past are not necessarily the features you need in the future. So that's the first one. When it breaks, when, when we say, hey, this is not working anymore, that's when we get a new tool. And we have a perfect example here with Slack and ClickUp. We only implemented ClickUp, what, six months ago? Not yeah, too if, long if, ago. If that, kind of at the and beginning before of the year. And before that, yeah, beginning of the year. And before that, we used to manage our projects in Slack that we would just create a channel and whoever was in that project was invited to the channel. And it was usually one person, one project manager that also designed, that also developed. And this worked. This was great. We never, ever had problems with communication. As projects got bigger, as people started working on more projects, that process didn't work anymore. And we saw communication falling. We saw issues happening. And that's when we said, this is not working anymore. We need to go onto ClickUp and have something that is task-based so other people can be part of the application, so other people can be part of the project. So perfect example. That's how we think about it. Yeah, and that's, um, I guess, just like when we talked about in the hiring for growth, right? When do you figure out where you're going to hire for growth? Well, you start hiring when you have more work than you can handle or to start delegating out some of those responsibilities. Absolutely. And that's kind of the same approach here, right? Is like, if you have a system or if you have a workflow in place that's working for you, you may not need to fix it or add new tools. But once you start wanting to, again, collaborate with more people, increase the scope of certain projects, right? If you have to just do one item or two and you're working with a client, a single client, no big deal. You can probably remember everything you have to do. When you have five or six different clients, 10, 15, 20 clients, and you talk to a client and you're not gonna get to that work immediately, you need a place to go and log some of that, or you need a place to be able to delegate those tasks to other people so that when they go then to work on that project, they have clear requirements and that you have some system for accountability. Um, and, and that's, you know, maybe saying that system for accountability is another good uh, way to, to start thinking about when you need to develop some of these processes is to hold other people accountable, to hold yourself accountable, right? If we know we have a project launching in two weeks and the deadline is clear and apparent inside of one of these tools, uh, for everyone to see, then there's no real excuse at the end of two weeks when, you know, somebody doesn't have something versus if we're just saying, Hey, you know, maybe we'll have this in two weeks and there's no real, uh, system or place for people to go and see what tasks they have do. Um, it's a lot more likely that you're going to miss a deadline that you're going to deliver something late or that you're going to forget a simple task, right? You may have 10 tasks and you only deliver eight because you didn't write them down properly. And so that's where kind of the tools go into play. And that's where I think we'll transition into some of the core tools stuff, right? And these core tools, again, are our FinSuite core tools. These are the tools that we run on. I think a lot of you will probably recognize some of them. Uh, again, feel free to jump in and share your um, tools in the chat. But let's go through some of these, Joe. Um, our core tools, obviously, web <laughs> Webflow, right? Webflow is the the trunk line that we operate yeah, we everything use that off one. of. Yeah. Um, Airtable, obviously, is probably our second runner up. You know, I, I know a lot of people in the no code world use Airtable, and especially now with the Noble tool, uh, we'll be able to eliminate some of the Zapier use in between there. Um, but but um, what else? So we talked about ClickUp for project management, Slack for team communications, but there's also like Discord. I think I see somebody in the comments here talking about Discord as well. Um, you know, there's a ton of different tools that, that you could use for something like this, uh, loom for video and screen recordings. This is great for like, um, you know, sharing little tutorial videos with somebody, those little videos we talked about yesterday, uh, last week about handing off the project website. A lot of times those are recorded in loom real quick. You walk through instead of typing some Anthem email 
you know, or Anthem like Slack message. You could just record a message with somebody and visually show them, you know, how things are happening on the page and what they should be looking at. Um, I, I, I don't know. What do you think, Joe? Um, Google, Google Suite, the G Suite. Yep. Well, I mean, how would you prioritize any of these, right? Like I've, these are kind of like. I'd, I'd love to go into some more use cases of, of what we're doing with these tools. Sure. Uh, the, for example, Slack. A lot of people use it for internal communication. We have now taken advantage of the new Slack Connect feature that lets you connect with other workspaces. And now this is the primary tool that we use to communicate real time with clients. So we have pretty much stopped all email. We still do some email, but we don't do active projects in email. We move that into Slack Connect. So that new feature in Slack has enabled us to have really good communication with clients and it, it makes us feel more connected and more con more in that project. Yeah, and, and Slack Loom, is now experimenting. Loom is well, Slack is now experimenting with calls and with uh, voice chat stuff, you know, which Discord has had for a while. Yeah. Um, I know we've done a few calls now inside of Slack as opposed to doing like a, a Google Meet or a Zoom call. And so I see some of these tools kind of consolidating into themselves. I, does anybody out there else use Slack for calls or anything like that? That'd be interesting. Um, we don't use it too much. We're still using, I think, kind of defaulting to, to um, Google Meet and Zoom. But um, yeah, it's a tool we use in that regard. And you were jumping into Loom. Yeah, Loom, Loom can be a game changer in your sales process. That a lot of people look at Loom as just sending a quick video showing somebody something. But you should be using this as you're pitching clients. You should be using this right when somebody comes in as a lead. Instead of answering in text, you can answer in text and visually. Mm. And that is going to help you stand out. That's going to help you communicate whatever you're communicating better. And it shows you care. It shows you took that extra, what, two minutes, three minutes to go and record that video. That is a tool that I really rely on to communicate very important things to clients. So yeah. that's yeah, it it, is... it's Loom or something else. Get a, get a screen recorder. Start recording what you want to communicate. Yeah. Um, let's address this click up uh, question real, real quick from Kenneth here. Why not make a dashboard for each client and then use that chat widget inside ClickUp? Um, we've kind of just found that the chat function inside of ClickUp is not as um, snappy or responsive as Slack is. And so we've kind of decided to keep yeah. essential communications in Slack, uh, but in ClickUp, anything related to a specific project. So if it's related to, to a to-do item, if it's related to a deliverable, if it's related to like, um, you know, kind of a key uh, failure point of the project, it's deliverable inside of ClickUp. But if we're just talking about the project, if we're having communications with the customer, um, we, we're still using Slack for that. Um, and it's not for any particular reason. If ClickUp chat becomes better, I do like their guest function. So I like being able to invite guests into your ClickUp board and have some of that. But there's also a learning tool associated with ClickUp. It, like ClickUp can be a little overwhelming. And so a lot of the people we're interacting with, a lot of people we deal with already are familiar with Slack. And so the learning curve is really slow, for, uh, uh, really low for them. And so it's easy for us to just bring them on real quick you know, inject ourselves into those communications without any kind of learning curve. And then we translate that into requirements inside of ClickUp that we then use to kind of manage the processes. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there. Um, let's stick it on main tools, Joe. Uh, we talked about Loom a little bit. Airtable, we talked a lot. We do, yeah, I mean, we use cool. Airtable a lot, right? And I mean, if, if anybody watches um, Aaron Kornblit, he did a show with Joe about how, um, they manage invoicing here at FinSuite uh, inside of Airtable. What what else do we use Airtable for? I know like Rohan in the comments is, you know, maybe we can, <laughs> he's like an Airtable uh, junkie, yeah. right? He does everything inside of Airtable. And so yeah. um, what else are we using Airtable for as a structural tool inside of FinSuite? We are using it to have our employees request payment. We have a lot of people that work project-based and they can go and request their invoice through Airtable, through an Airtable form. We use it to invoice our clients. We generate a Google Drive folder with a Google Drive doc, uh, and you can download that to PDF. So we can create the invoice in Airtable, click a button, and then we get that PDF for download. Uh, we keep our projects, our clients, invoices, everything. It, any important information that we have, Airtable is that base for that. Our mailing lists, anything. 
So it's it's a really important platform for us. Yeah, and as that Noble tool becomes more prolific and we're able to more easily manage the yeah. data on the Webflow sites with Airtable, I think that'll become even more prolific where we're just going to start, you know, um, really doing all the data management and, uh, you know, content design, if you will, inside of Airtable and then just syncing those two things. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, these tools are super important here, right? So, like, um, I wanted to, I don't want to dismiss, where was it? I, I lost the comment. Oh, uh, Babas was asking or saying about using Jira. Um, which is another like ClickUp type tool. Jira is actually uh, enterprise level. They have uh, Atlassian is uh, I think the company that uh, powers all that. Um, and that's a great tool, right? Lots of teams use that. It's it's fairly expensive to be honest. Um, and it can be overwhelming uh, as well. There's like four different suites that you can kind of pull together on that. ClickUp does a good job at a real base level of kind of combining all those tools. And so I think what happens is like a lot of enterprise companies are using Jira. Um, you know, but if you're new and coming into the mix, Jira has been around for a long time. If you're new and coming into the mix, a lot of people are going to click up because of the diversity it gives you, um, and the functionality it gives you for the cost. And so, um, there's some payoffs and trade-offs there, but yeah, either of those two, um, either of those two are great. Uh, Penny also asked a really good question here. Let me see if I can find this because she asked about, uh, her clients not, okay. So I work with a lot of clients who have no idea what any of these tools are, how can I introduce them tools as a way of communicating? Because we all take these for granted, right? We live in the world of tools. We live in the world of people who build tools. And so we all understand these tools natively. Penny's asking a really good question here that a lot of people she works with don't understand these tools. And so, Joe, how do we, you know, how do you deal with that when you come up against uh, a client or a person that's not super familiar? How do we introduce them to this? Um, how, do we, how do we deal with any of that? Yeah, Penny, this is a great, great, topic i'm really glad you brought this up this is a problem if you try to introduce a client to a new tool you may be hurting the project if you try to get someone using slack and they are clearly not somebody that uses slack or should be using slack that could hurt communication they could not be checking things as often as possible we do have clients like this they are not on ClickUp with us they are not on slack connect they are through email so the answer to your question is be native to the client. Don't be native to yourself. It's client first. So whatever they need to do to communicate the best way possible, go and let them do that. That's how I like to think about this. Yeah. And when you need them to use a tool, absolutely, you use something like a loom to onboard them. So, hey, we need to use this. I'm going to show you really quickly how it works. And then just please check in and do this every two weeks. So using Loom can really help walk th someone through into that program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and somebody else is, Ab Abdul is saying uh, that many, let's see, many design focused agencies use uh, Notion for team management. What do you think of it? Notion can be great uh, for yeah. some of that stuff, but it doesn't give you, again, the same functionality as ClickUp. Like you need a project management tool to manage projects. If you just want a to-do list, if you want a simple checklist, Notion is great for that. If you want to create some structured data where, you know, you want to have some kind of wiki documentation or something like that inside of Notion, great tool for that. Um, as far as project management, I just, it doesn't have the, like, it doesn't have all the tools yet, right? Like you can't have multiple people uh, assigned uh, subtasks and like the way that you can put checklists and templates together as far as project management goes, like it's just not easy to do a lot of this stuff in Notion yet. Um, and so Notion I see is kind of like a, more of a wiki slash almost like an Evernote competitor, right? Yeah. I still use Evernote for my personal notes and stuff. Um, so I see Notion in that light, excuse me for a sec. Um, rather than just a, you know, project management tool. Um, Let's see, what else do we have? Zapier is another big one. Um, Zapier. Zapier is one yeah. that we use all the time to kind of connect these tools. And I think somebody was asking in here, do we know any kind of database management update right here? Carlos was asking, uh, any platform for live database updates without Zapier? Um, yeah, there's things like Integromat or Parabola, you know, that you can kind of route data. Uh, the Noble block from Airtable is gonna allow you to do that. So you'll be able yeah. to sync an Airtable bit, uh, directly to um, the website itself. And so I don't know if you're asking like a no code database there, right? Which would be an air table. If you're talking about an actual database database, that's a different story. That's probably outside of the no code space. 
um, you know, that might be a custom connection there. And so I, I don't know that that would fit. But um, Zapier is kind of like the glue that brings all of these tools together, right? So anything that you can't connect, you can use Zapier or something like Integramat. Um, who was it that just yanked their pricing up real high? Is that, per, was it Parabola that just went from like a free plan at eight bucks a month to like an $80 uh, starter plan or something like that and sent the whole community reeling, the whole no code community like was crying because, you know, that's a lot of money to go. If you're going from an $8 free plan to all of a sudden going to a, you know, yep. an $85 plan, it's like, oh geez. Um, and we got Pierre in the house. Integromat is really good for that. You can have multiple routes with filters, et cetera. So yeah, if anybody's watching right now, Pierre in the comments, um, if you connect with him, he's like an Integromat pro. Um, so some serious skills as far as like making updates, a database and connecting things to Webflow um, through inside of that. And so we also have a couple core tools, I think that are um, maybe not unique to us, but um, you know, unique to kind of the web development world. Uh, obviously we're using JavaScript, that's a core tool. Uh, VS Code, which is used by our developers. So this is not something that we you know, use every day, but we do have a development team and they're using uh, some more of these structured tools. And then obviously we've got the CMS library, which is FinSuite, you know, uh, proprietary CMS library for Webflow, uh, which we use on a regular basis. So that kind of rounds out the core tools. Did you have any other use cases that you wanted to highlight in those core tools or um, any anything you wanted to do to wrap up before we move into the next section there? Yeah, looking at JavaScript as a tool that you you don't have to look at a tool as just an application, something that you can sign into. You can you you can look at a tool as something that's helping your workflow or helping you implement a feature quicker. So yes, we look at JavaScript as a tool and we are usually implementing some type of JavaScript on each site we build. Yeah. So get better with JavaScript, do a little bit more more with your sites. Definitely a tool. Yeah, um, let's it, let's see. I'm going back to the Integromat is really good. Pierre was talking about um, going to the eighty dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a if, if you're saving a bunch of work, you know, and time, that's worth paying. But a lot of people in no code space are experimenting. Same thing with JavaScript, right? Like, if you're going to push your career to the next level, if you're really looking to make a name for yourself in the space, if you learn a little bit of JavaScript, it can be transformational in the way that you build these sites, right? Like, you start re removing a lot of the limitations that are natively inherent inside of Webflow. And you start being able to push the limits. And so, uh, like Joe said, don't just think that tools are kind of pre-structured things that people have on the site. Tools could be things that you build, right? They could be workflows that you build with some kind of no-code uh, no stack, you know? And so, again, we're in the world of building tools. Like, this is our game here. This is the space that we're evolving and kind of adapting in. And so, like, just know that a little bit of technical knowledge, a little bit more technical knowledge on top of your no-code skill set can push you into that next tier, you know, that next level of what you can do for clients. Um, and it was inevitably that experimentation and that exploration of pushing those limits, which led us to release the CMS library, which led to a lot of FinSuite's growth, which is really why we're here in public uh, trying to share this knowledge with you all is to show like, this is how you can get to the next level, right? Don't just think that sitting around waiting all the tools that other people have built for you are the only thing you can do or that these are the only core tools you can use. Start thinking about how you can pull other things or how you can creatively arrange data using these tools to kind of push to that next level or find a unique way to set yourself apart from the other people in the space that are doing this stuff. Um, any thoughts? Love there? it. Yeah, before we go into... Uh, yeah, that was absolutely. Build your own tools. I like it. Yeah. That's what we're doing. You can do it too. Yeah, and that's I think that's Great. the appeal of this entire no-code space, right? Is that, hey, if you have a use yeah. case for something that you don't really find the specific application, like go figure out how to do it with uh, you know, a spreadsheet and some 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 no-code glue, which is Zapier, Integromat, Parabola, et cetera. You know, and Webflow is your front end, ideally. Um, you know, there's other tools though. There's there's Bubble out there, there's Builder HQ. You know, all these tools are kind of becoming prolific. And so don't think that just because you can't get it done with something off the shelf for a couple bucks, bucks a month that you can't go build an entire business around figuring out how to solve that problem. You know, and that's kind of the that's that's the whole spirit of the growth thing that we're here to do and, and talk about. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. Next topic, design tools. Is there anything in the comments design that we um, have missed before we jump into this real quick? Let's see. Asana automations on new tasks assigned directly from team members. Okay, so they're talking about automations. They're going back and forth about automations. Okay, so let's yeah. go into design tools. Design tools. Here, we are 
most frequently using Figma, Adobe XD, and then Photoshop and Illustrator. These tools are the ones that we also see most common from our clients. Most of the time we're getting a Figma as the deliverable for a design. When we do design, we're using one of these tools. They all have different uses. And I think this one is really a personal user preference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And design can be like, you know, you can go all the way from, you know, what you think is just like the high fidelity mockups, which is what you're doing in Figma. People are using sketch. Um, I'm still a dinosaur, right? So I, I know Photoshop. So like I learned in Photoshop, I still use Photoshop and I'm not doing a lot of design work. Right. And so, um, you know, our designers handle all of that. They're using Figma, they're using Adobe XD, they're doing, you know, whatever they want to do. I just still have a little bit of competency in Photoshop and Illustrator to be able to like deal with the assets and kind of, you know, break things down. Or if I need to mock something up, um, I've got a pretty robust skill set in Photoshop too. So um, I think having some kind of way to express your ideas visually, even if you're not a designer. And so this goes into tools like Whimsical or Miro or um, what's the balsamic for wireframing, you know, just having some kind of tool that allows you to map out visually the hierarchy, the page structure, the, 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 the basic layouts is something that you need to have if you're working in this business, right? It's one thing to be able to scope and write out requirements and be able to communicate with the client and be able to kind of do all these things. But if you can't organize those ideas into some type of visual reference point for a designer to take on or for a developer to take on and be able to like figure out what you're gonna build moving forward, you, you know, you kind of leave yourself at a loss here. And so uh, from from that standpoint, I would encourage everyone to figure out, you know, and I'm seeing the, the comments are lighting up right now, Figma versus XD, Adobe yeah. XD, everyone's kind of like, um, you know, claiming their best tools. Rohan saying pen and paper. Uh, let's see, both depends on the client. Grace is saying I use Adobe, but trying to dive into Figma more. XD is such an extension of my mind now. Um, Let's see, the tools do not make a designer. That's great, yeah. You have to use the tools that makes you happy, for sure. That's that's why I love there seeing the, the back like and that. forth here because people are like, XD, no, it's Figma, Figma, Adobe, Figma. So we've got like the competition <laughs> going here about which tool is the right tool for the designer. Um, maybe we'll need to bring some of the designers yeah. on and do, maybe we'll have to do a design session about some of that, um, you know, to, to, to just, discuss we'll have a battle of the tools right like we can have people talking about what tools make the most sense for them uh that would be good to have some raw designers on as we are neither of those things although i pretend like i'm kind of a designer okay <laughs> so don't get it twisted y'all <laughs> reimar is an artist he's an yeah. artist yeah i'm an artist with a design school like i'm a design school dropout too so like i have a, a bit of formal training in commercial arts and design uh, I just don't, I don't practice design. So I don't like call myself an active participating designer, but I do have a good eye for that. And um, yeah, I think I, I want to point that out again. Rohan said pen and paper, and I don't want to um, dismiss. Uh, oh, that's not the right one. Where is it? These things update so quickly. Rohan, pen and paper. Um, I, yeah, there's nothing pen faster or better in my mind for like, if you just need to quickly flesh out an idea, I always have a notebook you know, next to my table, like I, I just literally all day, I can't even figure out how to get it in here. I literally have a notebook. I'm always writing things out. Um, if you look like I have uh, sketch pads. Yeah. Like that's one of the best ways, quick, low fidelity, you know, figure some stuff out and then you bring it into, um, the, the interface. Grace is making a bold statement. Sketch is dead. So, uh, where's the fin suite community discord. We don't really sketch have a dead. discord, but, I, um, yeah, that maybe it's something we need to think about. Uh, right now, we're kind of all in on these uh, live streams and kind of getting the community around these, but we're thinking about how to expand that mm -hmm. and how to get more interactive with that. We do have the co-work space, which is open. If anybody's interested in dropping in there, we we have, yeah. uh, sometimes I drop in and there's meetings taking place. Sometimes we're in meetings and people drop into our meetings and like there's always people kind of coming in and out of that co-work space. And so that's going to be another, let's jump into more tools, right? Let's go back into more Tools here. More tools. Um, so we, we talked about the design tools. Let's get into some of the secondary tools um, that we use. And these are kind of like the member stack, right? This is the uh, um, Miro, right? We use Miro. We talked about some prototyping tools. I use Whimsical. I don't know um, if anybody in the audience uses Whimsical. Whimsical is a really cool prototyping tool 
that allows you to create like um, uh, mind maps and simple wireframes, and you can kind of mix those all in one canvas. Um, Miro is a little, that's pretty powerful for that same kind of thing. Miro is a great for collaboration. So we use Miro a lot for various collaborations. Um, Joe, any thoughts on- You can even have a meeting in Miro. Oh, talk about that. Yeah, you can you can have a, a full team meeting inside Miro as people are working. Our technical development team just had a meeting this morning and they were just drawing in Miro. They were video chatting, they were, cha they were talking and it was a, a very interactive and collaborative meeting. So yeah, Miro, we just started using that. That's a powerful one. Uh, and I'm I'm really liking it. It made me drop the the sketch wireframes, the sketch mockups, and just work inside a, a product like yeah. Miro. So that's great. Yeah, and we've done Miro is great also for like data gathering from clients and doing back and forth. Like if you're doing client launch meetings or a project kickoff meetings, or if you want to do like um, collaborative feedback sessions, things you might have done before inside of like a a workspace where you're all in a, uh, a room with like a big whiteboard and people are just kind of taking turns going up to the whiteboard and moving sticky notes and writing things up or if you're doing breakout sessions and things where you want to like just get people really interactive about being able to you know get involved and share feedback um Miro is a great tool for that so I, I would encourage anyone who's mm -hmm. not really experimenting with that to take a look at Miro because it is a powerful collaboration tool um let's see what else is on the list of um, Lambda test. So that's cross browser. We testing. have Lambda test. Yeah. That's, that's more of the technical side of things. Um, I'm out of my water on that one. I'm out uh, of my no, on that one. no, this is not a technical tool. And this is a great example of people being empowered to use their own tools and then they become more company wide. And now multiple people are using this mm. Lambda test is going to allow you to do cross browser testing. So instead of opening all of your browsers of all different versions, you can quickly navigate through different browsers and see where the mistakes are inside your website. So this prevents a lot of back and forth from client. Hey, I'm a browser version, this, 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 and I see this weird. You can address those earlier before sending to client. So one person said, hey, there were a ton of issues on Firefox. Started using Lambda test, liked it, liked it. And now there's a team of people using Lambda test. I would say it's being used by our designers. So it, it became company wide through somebody saying, hey, I have a problem in this flow. I need to fix it. And this tool is fixing it. So great tool and great example of, of a tool going company wide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I haven't used it, so I'll have to check that out. I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar with that, but it seems like a cool tool. Uh, OMG, yeah. different browser issues are the worst. Uh, link please to the, uh, Lambda, t Lambda test. Do you want to share that in the chat, Joe? Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, pa pastel Maggie saying that pastel is uh, great for rounds of review for commenting. So that's like, uh, somebody, somebody else was saying, uh, Oh, well, that's Maggie again. Other great commenting tool is Pastel. Uh, Jay is asking what we use for payroll invoicing. Um, Airtable. There's a whole episode and rundown on that over on the Automate yeah. All the Things website. Yeah, and uh, that's working. That has not broken. I think at some point, our system on Airtable will not work anymore. You know, you get to a certain size company and you need something to manage that process dedicated. So it's working now. When that breaks, when we say, hey, this process isn't working anymore, we're then don't, going to consider a, a dedicated payment processor platform. Yeah. Um, okay, Jay. Yes, you ask and we shall. Next, we're going to move on to nice. uh, communications, media, and social. We're going to kind of wrap these all up into one thing. Um, obviously, we're using Zoom where appropriate. Uh, Google Meet, where appropriate, you know, depending on different people, different tools. Uh, but one thing we've really gotten excited about recently is this tool called Gather.Town. If you haven't seen the, um, with a finsuite.com forward slash cowork, um, if you want to go check that out. Um, actually, yeah, go check that out because Rohan, drop a chat in the, drop a link to the cowork space after. Let's do this at one o'clock. We're going to cut the stream and then we're going to jump into that uh, co-working space. So if anybody wants to hang out with us, we'll do some Q&A. We'll do some hangouts inside of the gather space. Um, it's a really cool interactive way to um, 
just kind of meet with people. I'm going to pull this up, Joe. Let's do this. Let's do it this way. Let's do this. I'm going to pull the FX. Pull, okay, pull these three. And let's go to FinSuite.com. Gather is great because you get to you get to take a thumbnail that you've been seeing of somebody and actually see their face moving. You know, so many of you, we know you and we see your thumbnail and we recognize your thumbnail. But then when you're in gather, you say, Hey, I know this person. And you start talking to them right away. It feels very real. Like, like you're actually talking to somebody. So yeah. there's Ray and he can go up to this person. Yeah. Somebody's yeah, running around in start here right now. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave just for, um, I'm just going to leave for, uh, purposes of running into random people and, but check that out. Gather.town. If you missed our, <laughs> if you missed our, um, global open house, there's just something about being in these 2d spaces or these, like when you're just in a chat app, you know, or in a, in a webinar or whatever, there's kind of like this sterile feeling where like, like, I don't know that I'm with anybody, you know, I kind of felt this way, uh, at, at Webflow's last community update thing. Right. It was cool to kind of get to chat with Vlad, um, you know, and it was great to get updates, but I didn't see, like, there were probably thousands of people watching this stream and I didn't get to take in any of that atmosphere other than just seeing kind of like the comments light up. And so these tools like gather these tool, um, a couple people have uh, mentioned a few other ones inside of there, uh, inside of the chats that like, they just allow that other experience where like you have this added layer of engagement, right? Where you create some of the social dynamics. Like when I walk up to somebody, I can see and hear them. Right. And when I walk away from them, I don't just like I would in real real life. If I walk into a room where something's going on, I'm automatically happening inside of that space. And so it's just it recreates some of the dynamics. I was at an event the other day and people were on a stage and everyone's like sitting facing forward. Right. And so, again, it had that little bit of social pressure to just kind of like you would in an auditorium or like you would in a in a real setting. And so something about that like that excites me about, you know, what's, what's happening, experimenting in this space. And so like, keep an eye on cool tools. Don't just get stuck in thinking that like, oh, everyone's using zoom. So we should just use zoom for meetups or everyone's doing, you know, their webinars this way. So we should do them this way. Like start exploring some of these new tools that are out there and find creative ways to, again, not just set yourself apart, but to like create dynamic engagement points. If you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to grow a brand, one of the best ways to do that is create like meaningful one-to-one -one experiences with people in your audience. You know, and so these new tools are great ways to do that. Um, and so that's what you see us experimenting with a ton of inside of here. So um, there you go. Uh, that's gather. So Rymar doesn't like random people. That's not true. I just didn't want to have to like randomly bump into somebody in the middle of doing a live stream. <laughs> Um, any other social communication tools? Let's see. What do we miss on here? Uh, the multimedia stuff. So uh, if you have any other com tools, yeah. uh, I'll jump into the. Um, we can jump into those next. Any any other thoughts there, Joe? Yeah, jump into multimedia. Yeah. Um, the other big thing that, you know, we do a lot of is kind of, you know, these streams and uh, um, producing videos and content. And, you know, we've mentioned a couple Loom already, but like, you know, After Effects for motion graphics, if you're getting into Lottie files, if you're doing anything with motion graphics on the web, the ability to kind of take those motion graphics uh, and bring them, export them into the web now is a fantastic, um, you know, revelation in the whole space. Um, Adobe Premiere, so doing video editing. If you're anywhere in this space, you should know a little bit about some kind of video editing tool. Premiere is a high level professional tool. Uh, Final Cut uh, Pro is also another professional level tool, but it's a lot more accessible, I think, as far as like ease of just doing simple edits. But even iMovie or Windows, I don't, I don't know what the Windows tool is. It's probably terrible, but it'll help you edit a video. Um, you should be learning some way to like take a story, to record a clip, uh, add a little bit of embellishment with some kind of graphics or title, and like produce something, right? These streams that you see, you know, we take uh, the little intro, right? That was all created in After Effects, and so like these are the things where you add the polish. This is where you add the little uh, pizzazz. You know, you see the little sidebar that we have here. Um, this is all created. Actually, this is Keynote. This is Keynote running on an iPad behind um, our screen. So if I like pull Joe and I right here, if I pull our two videos, what you see is that this is just a Keynote presentation and I'm just swiping between uh, Keynote scenes behind us. And then I have the ability to just bring in two overlaid videos. And so like this is not a thing that you would think about to do for live streaming, but it creates a, a cool effect for us. 
And so again, another way to experiment, uh, you can use OBS uh, to stream. I don't know if anybody's streaming out there, uh, recording video, you should be. Just experiment with it. You never know. You, you might end up with 100 people a week hanging out and chatting with you and, and watching uh, your live streams. So um, anyway, on some of that, uh, yeah, just the multimedia stuff. DaVinci Resolve is free. DaVinci Resolve is uh, free, and that's a great tool, especially if you're doing like color correction stuff. Um, yeah, there's there's all sorts of video editing tools out there that you can use, um, even on your phone, right? Some of the stuff that's on the phone or iPad is like really powerful. Um, okay, so that being said, um, I think that covers kind of all the tools we wanted to cover. Uh, let's see, automating the stream with iOS shortcuts. I am not automating the stream, Pierre is asking, um, but I am automating it. I've got a stream deck here, and uh, I do have a bunch of hotkeys figured out. Um, I use a tool called Livestream Studio 6 for the live streaming, which is powered by Vimeo. Um, it's a pretty robust uh, live streaming tool. All these comments that you're seeing on the screen are kind of powered by that. Um, let's see, Google, how do I do something in Webflow? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest, I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, let's we have a see, like, Bing, go ahead. Go we ahead, have Joe. a question from Vlad. Yeah, see. Sir, Sir Niala. Guys, what about FinSuite Master Course for beginners? I think that's a good place to touch on our client first system. Yeah. If you got the client first system last week, this is the start to our beginners course. That this is not talking about HTML or CSS specifically, but through a neat and organized naming system, you are going to start understanding these topics better. Yeah. So we are working on this. We don't know. This is not something active that we have planned with a deliverable, but we are very interested in getting beginners set up with Webflow, using it correctly, and becoming pros. So absolutely, we're going to do this, Vlad. Yeah. Um, and I think you'll start. I mean, we have a ton, right? We've got uh, that beginner, RR, uh, Abritz, intro to the CMS yeah, library. That's a good one. Um, again, that client first. So uh, somebody's asking, Jordan is asking, would love to try out the client first system. Uh, is that still possible? It will be open to the public um, at some point. So we're waiting for this first round. I thought I saw Rohan posted an Airtable link in the comments. So I'm not sure if he snuck that link to somebody else or if he reopened that form. Uh, not sure <laughs> <laughs> what Rohan's doing over there, but uh, he may be He's the person to butter up, you know, you, you got to slide Rohan like a, you know, like a buy me a coffee tip or something or, you know, slide into his, his DMs for secret access to that. So uh, <laughs> Jay is saying he I've can be been persuaded. Yeah, he could be persuaded, right? Like we, we do accept bribes. This is not like some big political office. So, you know, like, <laughs> uh, let's see. I've already begun implementing client first on a new project and. Let's see. Great. I'm doing great, uh, Jay. So we're looking forward to your great, great, great. feedback on that. Let's see. The client first system was way overdue. Yeah, glad you appreciate that. Um, nice. Thank you. Somebody's Mark. asking about passwords. Do you use any password tools, Joe? I do not. I I do not. I have. I store my passwords. Well, no. I I'm not going to give. This is the disclaimer. I'm not giving any information on passwords this is a very delicate <laughs> delicate situation so disclaimer yeah. no information on passwords i don't use an official tool to manage them that's funny um okay so let's see rohan oh he did slip it out there okay so let's see we're gonna pin that message oh nice um okay so there you go if you're watching and you've hung out with us you got two responsibilities right now. First of all, go like the damn video, please and thank you. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and then there you go. You've got access to the FinSuite if you'd like um, to jump into that client first naming system. Uh, Rohan has posted the link for that again. Uh, Jay Poucher saying LastPass. So LastPass is a great tool for um, password protection, et cetera. Um, yeah, any other tools, questions, thoughts? Uh, what's going on? Should we just jump into the... The co work space, where's our time at? We got 10 minutes, y'all. Where's some questions at, right? Let's get deep. We're at 90. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Rohan saying any channel for the community. Any, no, I don't think we got anything for 100 this week. We're, we're gonna got to catch up with paying our debt from last week. So once we, once we pay yeah, up on yeah. the, um, uh, the, the merch store, then we can start thinking about making other, um, 
different things. Let's see. Christian Smith, I wrote some improvements for the Thin Sweet Cookie Consent Tool in form on the website. Okay, great. We appreciate okay. that. Uh, yeah, we appreciate that. I'm going to go look at that right now, Christian. Thank yeah. you. Um, Maggie is saying that she saves clients' passwords on post it notes all over my fridge. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that's the right move, <laughs> but hey, uh, to each their own. Ezekiel, starting to use ClickUp for my workflow. ClickUp is great. Uh, it nice. took me a little while to get into it because there's so many things you can do with ClickUp. Like literally you can do everything with ClickUp. Um, as somebody pointed out, you could even replace Slack b because it has its own chat functionality. Although we decided not to do that because um, we don't like the chat as much as we do Slack. But it's great for structuring and it does things that other tools doesn't. So if you're using like monday.com or if you're using uh, like Asana, there's a couple things that ClickUp does that none of those do, and it has to do with like how you can nest uh, comments and tasks and list and subtask and everything inside of there. Uh, it gives you an, a couple extra layers of, of how you can do that, and the the breadth of the the things you can do inside of ClickUp is just overwhelming. And so um, they've also just kind of received a ton of money uh, from from a VC. You know, they, they, they raise a bunch of funds. And so they're working on kind of performance and optimization. And so uh, I would look to click up to kind of keep pushing uh, that whole project management space forward. And they're used by some pretty big names. So Jay Poucher saying click up and Discord, yo, it works. Fo show. Okay. Uh, I don't know about Discord. I use Discord for like some of the gaming stuff that I tried to do uh, once. And Discord's. Yeah, some of those Discord are toxic, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> like, like, I don't do much gaming, That's... and that re that that kind of confirmed it when I got into some of those Discords. I was like, "Oh, y'all are crazy in here." Okay. That that's also a tool that I think a lot of our bigger clients would not be okay downloading for for business communication. So make sure if you're using Discord for something like a client chat, make sure that you are inviting clients that would be okay using Discord. I can imagine a bunch of our clients right now saying, hey, hey, we we can't use this as a company. So think of that too, who you're talking to. Yeah, um, we got some dreamers in the crowd. Acute talking about you can even replace Webflow in a year. Let's see it. I don't believe it. Um, I think you got a lot of work if you think you're going to get even close to what they've built in a year without, you know, maybe right if you took like some of the best engineers in the world and you threw them in a room and they got nothing to do for a year except for try to rebuild that they still probably couldn't get close so um i don't think so but i like your spirit uh i've talked to him he's trying to build something so go go ahead and uh, explore your dreams but uh i'm not sure about all that uh, click up for tracking hours i do believe you can track hours in there um yeah here we do we do that with a an ongoing client and it works really well. Let's see. Will you use Webflow e-commerce for the merch store? Yes, we will be using Webflow yeah. and a Printful integration. So, um, yeah, of course. What what would we use for Webflow e-commerce? You know, we're like the Webflow. We're all in on Webflow, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, and this no might Shopify be good, right? for us. Yeah, and the more we start messing around with Webflow e-commerce, maybe the more we start coming up with tools that uh, you know you all might. You know, um, like to use as well. Let's see. Fin Suite is corporate, JK LOL. Fin Suite is corporate. Gamers. No, we're not corporate, but we want to work with corporate companies. That's 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 the goal. But no, we're trying to stay away from corporate for as long as we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. We could list, uh, we've got all the um, tools kind of listed in a doc here. So we could for sure uh, leave this as a list somewhere that's available. Um, we can add links to everything. Um, this might have been good, Joe. I was thinking like halfway through, it might have been good for us to like uh, figure out, you know, like we could have just had the, the tools up on screen while we were talking in the background. We could have like done a little more interactive. But... That would have been oh, nice. There's always next time. I, that's what we'll kind of explore with the uh, design <laughs> show. So anyway. Uh, Pierre yeah, is calling me official. out here. He's saying Rymar isn't your site still on WordPress. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. Listen, this is a real dilemma. Okay. Because my site is not just my website. My site is a multi-site framework built inside of WordPress. That is actually the backbone for like 
a, like more websites, other websites, right? So it's a, a couple of my other like side projects from way back when, and a couple like really old clients that I, you know, I still handle their hosting. Uh, it's a complete nightmare. I hate logging into my WordPress site. I haven't replaced it because it's literally hundreds and hundreds of pages and the process of moving that to Webflow is daunting, uh, but it is under, <laughs> it's being considered, okay? So Pierre, you know, take it easy on me, all right? Um, <laughs> I understand the irony of being such a Webflow homer yeah, and um, I, having my I personal can't believe website our... on WordPress. It's... That's that's a hit for us at FinSuite. Our CMO <laughs> has a WordPress site. But I also Jeez. have like a ton of other <laughs> Webflow sites too. So it's not like I only have a WordPress site. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Do you guys use something for forms or the native Webflow forms? Babis, we're using Webflow, native forms. Webflow forms. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Um, unless there's like a specific requirement. We are working on some cool tools for mapping forms. And so we do have some interesting tools that allow you to map third party forms using Webflow forms. And so essentially you can then use the Webflow forms, you style those form elements, and then in the background, we're mapping that to another form. And when you submit, you're actually submitting the official form on like a, you know, a marketing automation software, a Marketo or something like that versus, you know, using the Webflow forms. And so we are even getting creative in that. Uh, so yeah, for sure. Um, Let's see. You will be called out every episode, right, Mars? So now the squad's coming now that it's publicly known <laughs> that my site is. Oh, no. Sure, you guys hear that? Did I? I think I clicked the. Uh, I clicked the media in the background. Well, I guess that we was have a question from Nick. Who's got a dope multi step form? Mm. And that's a great question. We are building a really awesome form product. It is actively in development. It's going to have multi-form, multi-step. It's going to have conditional logic. It's going to have what Reimar was just talking about, form mirroring. It's going to have math. We are working on really taking Webflow forms to the next level while still using Webflow forms. So we, I don't have one to show you here, but to that question, we will have a tool specifically for these types of flows. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Pablo cutting deep too. I think this was from before talking about my personal web flows or my WordPress site saying it needs a redesign too. Oh <laughs> man. I'm taking all the hits today. Taking all the hits. today. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I think that's it. Um, I don't see a whole lot of other questions and comments coming in. We're going to keep it under the one hour time limit today. We will go spend uh, 15, 20 minutes hanging out in the co work space. If anybody wants to come and kick it, if you got more questions, uh, you can come and hang out with us there. We're going to jump over into that space. And so if you'd like to, you know, hang out with us, ask questions, get one on one, we're going to do that now. Otherwise, we will catch you all next week. Thanks for hanging with us for another episode of Evan Grove. Thank <laughs> you.